speaker is Julie Jedlicka. Um, she's currently a professor at Missouri Western State University. And she was a master's student uh, back in the 2000s here with John. And I have a special connection with Julie. She's part of the reason why I ended up here. I was looking for jobs out in California and ended up getting coffee with her one day. And she recommended I should probably think about going to grad school and that Michigan might be a really great place to go. So thank you, Julie. Um, and Julie's going to talk to us today about uh, building conservation efforts within the university, creating a bird-friendly campus. Thanks so much. So um, it's my pleasure to talk really quickly. I have five minutes with you today about the influence John's had on my life and my career. And um, he, I did my master's degree with John 2001 to 2004. And I think it was obvious um, why I chose him as a master's advisor. I heard his enduring support for my research. If I remember the conversation correctly, I think it went something like, Julie, I hate birds. <laughs> <laughs> and that was uh, back in 2001. And I have come to hear through the grapevine that since he took the trip to Brazil after that, he learned to love um, avian life and has come to appreciate the last living lineage we have in the world today of dinosaurs. So um, it's obvious why I wanted to talk and bring birds back into this conversation. Um, what changed my career and my research was working um, in Finca Rolanda in um, bird-friendly coffee. So studying birds, and I convinced John they were worthy to study because they eat insects, okay? So we care about them. They're predators here. And obviously, um, Finca Rolanda is one of many bird-friendly certified coffee farms where consumers can then support ecosystems that they care a lot about um, in the marketplace and support more sustainable forms of agriculture. So leaving my master's degree um, and starting at UC Santa Cruz in California, I wanted to take the lessons that I had learned from bird-friendly coffee farms and move it to the ecosystems I was working in. And um, to me, that came to um, California vineyards. And California Vineyards is a way big step from shade-grown coffee. There's no canopy trees here. But if you put in nest boxes for songbirds, you can greatly increase the abundance of insectivorous birds and the species richness of birds that have lost a lot of their nesting sites with deforestation as vineyards are encroaching over the landscape. So um, I also was able to continue looking at what these birds are eating with um, molecular scatology, which is a real field the study of scat, and what you do is you pick up these birds and you scare the shit out of them. And here's um, the fecal sample. And you can just do a little method and do some DNA sequencing and figure out what they're eating. And so I was moving to efforts to try to build, honestly, a bird-friendly coffee certification, continuing with the Smithsonian, or not coffee, vineyard, bird-friendly wine. Wouldn't that be cool and sexy? And um, we've been talking with a lot of growers, trying to get some of the richest growers in the United States to put forward you know, a couple tens of thousands of dollars to support some of the science that needs to be done if we were going to move in that area. And what we had done with talk after talk of trying to gain this funding was kind of failing and failing and degrading and degrading. And I think this is kind of shown in my picture of the nest boxes that I built by hand out of Redwood over 200. I'll have to go fast were falling apart, and um, we didn't get the money, and it wasn't working. And I was walking in along the Napa River, and I saw a kind of a more sustainable way to think about bird boxes. So these are boxes that were put up by Don Dalston, which kind of, who kind of pioneered, um, yeah, yeah, economic ornithology at UC Berkeley. And these boxes he put up like 20 years before, and they're still going, and they still have active nests. So when I took um, a faculty position at Missouri Western State University, besides being totally excited that our mascot's a griffin, half eagle, half lion, <laughs> I took it because of the amazing campus nature area. So Missouri Western is located on over 700 acres. And this is central campus, but a lot of undeveloped lands, a lot of it still hayed. And this is kind of central campus that's just right here. But all of these sticky sheets are pairs of nest boxes that I've put up with the help of a lot of my students. And we're looking at nest box preference, sustainable potentially, maybe <coughs> degrading over time, just looking to see if there's different reproductive success on different species nesting in these, protecting them from predator guards, taking a lot of data, 
We've been working on putting up purple martin colony boxes as well. This is on our farm. We have a little farm. I'm trying to start an agroecology course there, which would be awesome. Hasn't made it to the books yet. And then barn owl boxes as well. So incorporating as much as possible. And uh, we're mist netting birds. We have over 15 years of data on mist netting migratory birds stopping through in the fall, spring and fall migration. So we're trying to analyze that data and expand on what we mean by bird friendly to greater human managed landscape. So obviously it applies to agroecology, but we're going to talk a little bit later this afternoon about urban ecology and proper management and what that means, how we can support some native species and how you have to deal with um, house sparrows, non-native um, kind of invasive species that are really aggressive. And so I think this recognizes our moral compass in um, working with um, John Vandermeer and how we connect to the world around us in a human-managed way, how to apply science, and how to engage a lot of students who are from urban environments, from blue-collar environments. Um, a lot of my best students are really hunters um, from Missouri and really enjoy the naturalist aspect of that. So um, I think key to all of this is the ability to continue on this undergraduate education, bringing students in to um, teach about sustainable development, and to encourage, you know, maybe not certified by the Smithsonian bird-friendly campuses, but to talk about um, creating a university that engages students, provides opportunities to learn hands-on in an applied way. I really thank John Vandermeer for setting me on this path, and no doubt I wouldn't have made it here on my own. And, um, it's been over 10 years ago this summer that he presided over the wedding of my husband and I here in Ann Arbor. He did an awesome job. It was one of the best nights of our life. And um, I thank him personally and professionally for um, helping me today.